Yo, what's going on guys? It's Anal Mycology. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to create grain spawn and how to inoculate your grain spawn with developed liquid culture. First thing we're going to start with here is creating our grain spawn. To do so, we're going to go ahead and pressure cook a bag of popcorn for 25 minutes in our pressure cooker. This is just standard unsalted yellow popcorn. You can purchase a bag of this from the grocery store for about $3. Now, one of these bags will make about three jars of spawn, and each jar makes one tub. So, one bag of popcorn here makes you about three tubs worth of product. Another thing I want to mention here is the reason I prefer to use popcorn as opposed to other grains, rice, or even rye, is because they all tend to get really saturated and soggy under the contents of lots of water and pressure. And so when you have really soggy and saturated grains, this creates the perfect microclimate for contamination and mold. And these are competitors that could fight with your mycelium and potentially take over your whole jar or a whole colony later on down the road if you don't spot it immediately. You can see here I'm putting about two inches of water right over the top of my popcorn and patting some of them down. They're very dry from the bag, so they like to float up to the top. So patting them down helps the water get into them and log them to the bottom so you can see how much water you're actually putting in there. Once this process is completed, I'm going to go ahead and pressure cook this for 25 minutes. Make sure you have your pressure cooker set to airtight and make sure this keep warm option isn't on. After this is done, we'll be back. All right, guys, our popcorn has been successfully cooked. I'm gonna go ahead here and put on some pot holders and we're gonna strain this popcorn now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this here, put this over to the side. Alrighty, put these down for a second here. For precautionary measures, I always like to unplug my pressure cooker and put it somewhere else when I'm done with it. Pressure cookers are pretty scary, so you really don't want to play with them or underestimate their abilities. I go ahead here and strain some of this popcorn. You really want to make sure your grain is as dry as possible. There's already a lot of moisture content in your culture, so there's really no reason for your grain to be wet. It will be a little bit wet once it's finally done, but this is okay. I'm gonna go ahead here and just shake this around a little bit because I wanna make sure that all the water is out of here. All right. Now for the next part, you're gonna grab like a giant cooking tray or a pan and put a shirt or a towel over it. This can be a towel off of your floor or as long as it's not like obviously like really dirty or you know covered with debris you should be okay to just put the popcorn on it um, you have to repressure sterilize later on anyway so sterility isn't even really an issue at this point for you and go ahead and put these all on the towel really want to be super careful with these I don't want these to go everywhere because they're so small I swear I find like a popcorn kernel all around my floor like once or twice a day. To go ahead and spread these around a little bit and fold the towel right over the top of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for about an hour and a half. I'll come back in 90 minutes and we're gonna go ahead and go to the next step, filling our jars. All right guys, so here we are filling my jars with popcorn. I'm gonna go ahead and fill each of them about 75% full. Some people ask me, you know, wouldn't you wanna do more than 75% full? You get more mycelium. And as much as more mycelium would be great, I really have to say no, because I really wanna make sure there's enough room inside of my jars afterwards to go ahead and shake them up. You're gonna to wanna to shake the, uh, the mycelium jars multiple times during this process afterwards to help recolonize and if there's not enough room in the jar to shake it it's going to be really hard to separate that because they're going to be held together like a brick with that hard fresh mycelium next step here is going to be to go ahead and pressure cook our jars so you can see here again i'm using the modded lids that i talked about in the last episode with our 
2 micron filter and our silicone self-healing injection port. Scroll all these on. They don't have to be super tight like the liquid culture ones were. These ones, you don't really want them to seal. You just, for the most part, want them to be pressure sterilized. And you're going to need to open these again later on when you go ahead and spawn them. Again, I'm going to take tin foil and put them right over the tops of each of these jars. This is like I mentioned in the last video because uh, the 2 micron filter, while it does protect against airborne contamination, um, you know, it really doesn't help against water going right through it, or mist particles to be specific. Alright. Once these are all done, I'm going to go ahead and stick these inside of my pressure cooker with about 2 inches of water right at the bottom. We're going to pressure cook these bad boys for 90 minutes on 15 PSI. And here we are. After the 90 minutes is up, we're going to go ahead and put our pot holder back on. Open this up. And now on the inside here, you should have multiple jars. We're going to go ahead and take these jars, and I like to put them just right on the counter. And I just leave them here for quite a while. Uh, I would say about four or five, even six hours. It doesn't matter as long as it's not for a prolonged period of time. I would say don't go longer than 12 because, I mean, these these are obviously corn kernels and you don't want sprouts to happen. So after about three hours, they should be room temperature and you should be good to inoculate. After your jars have been brought to room temperature, you're going to want to go ahead and pick an incredibly sterile area. You can choose to take the tin foil pieces off right after you're done and, um, you know, going ahead and pressure cooking. Or you can go ahead and take them off right now. I go ahead and sterilize my hands with 91% ISO alcohol. And we're going to begin the inoculation phase. So you can see here, there's a little bit of moisture that's attached to each corn kernel grain, but that's okay. As long as there's none pooling at the bottom, we are okay. Because this culture, as you can see, is about 90% water. The rest of it's corn syrup, as we stated in the last episode with the culture series. So as long as there's a little bit of moisture in there, when you go ahead and move it around, the genetics will be able to eat right through. We're gonna go ahead here and pull out one of our needle tips and open up the Yeti here. I like to always sterilize it with rubbing alcohol beforehand. You can never be too sterile in this process. There's, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and contaminations and it's really the last thing you want, especially when you're babysitting something as precious as this for multiple months at a time. I like to go ahead and wipe the extra moisture off of here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up our syringe tip here. And we're gonna go ahead and torch sterilize this. I like to go about halfway up the needle. Again, like I stated in the last video, please always use a torch. Most of the things that I share in these videos are going to be used through most of the videos and I'm going to be going through in depth here and kind of really talking about modding jars and different techs and we're going to have some fun stuff. I'm going to go ahead here and wipe off the self-healing silicone injection port. And of course, mist and fan it a little bit. Once it's done, go ahead and inject this. You can see I, I did mess up here a little bit because I stuck it on the wrong side. See, I was like, oh, I can't stick it there. But that's just because the hole is a little bit smaller than the injection port itself. And I just hit the side. We're going to go ahead and inject CCCs or a full syringe. These are all 10 CC syringes, so about 10 CCs will do the trick. We're going to go ahead and wipe this all off with our rubbing alcohol. We're going to go ahead and repeat this process multiple times. Once these are all done, I like to go ahead and re-rub them a couple of times with rubbing alcohol and cap all of my syringes for protective purposes. Always cap your syringes when putting them in the trash, and each one of these is only good for new uses. I don't want you guys to think that I'm saving these for later, I'm just making sure I don't stab myself when I take the trash to the dumpster. I'm gonna go ahead here and give these a really good shake. All right here. I wanna make sure you do that because you, all of the your culture is gonna by default go to the bottom, but you wanna make sure that at least 
at least there's a bunch of culture on each corn kernel itself and this helps it really eat away from the very middle and slowly start to trail up and that's it guys this is how you make grain spawn anyway guys I hope this video helped you. In the next video, we're going to be going over how you can take your successfully developed white grain spawns and put this mycelium down into a sterilized tub with a little bit of substrate. I'm going to be going over that as well. And you can start putting these into colonization phase and then introduce FAE and then put them into fruiting. And then you will successfully have yourself some fruits. Anyway, guys. If you guys like this video, go ahead and join the Discord server. I'm sure if you search around the internet enough, you'll be able to find it. And as always, much love.